Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk um, a little bit more in depth about the Android annotations. Um, so Android annotations, if you never heard of them before, you can find out information about them on this website here, androidannotations.org. Um, and after you read up on them there, I recommend you to watch my Hello Android Annotations video that'll tell you how to get a project up and running. Um, but this video is going to focus a little bit more on what the power of annotations really is. How does it help you as a developer uh, make your applications easier to build and easier to maintain and understand the code of. So to do that, I'm actually going to work with uh, another example project that I've talked about before, which is uh, this next video down here. So you can find these videos like this Hello Annotations video and this next one I'm going to talk about. You can find these on YouTube or you can also come to my website here, which is makemyandroidapp.org. You can always find all of my videos on the site. You can click the, uh, the videos here to go to YouTube or you can also use a direct download link to, um, to download these and watch them locally. So all of my videos are hosted on this site. You can find these two here and uh, the whole list of all the other ones and I'll keep adding them to the site as I make new ones. So the example that I'm gonna that I'm gonna show you today um, using Android annotations is actually one that I've done before a video about which is the stack sites example. You can find the source code for this at github.com slash foamy guy slash stack sites um, I recommend if you haven't seen the video that focuses on stack sites which is uh, the next one down here on my website you can also find the video on YouTube if you haven't seen this video check it out this will tell you what um, the stack sites app is and uh, kind of what it aims to do I'm not going to go too much into how it works in this video I'm just going to show you the one um, kind of change to it, the activity that we changed to make it work with Android annotations and highlight some of the differences of the annotations version versus the regular one. So um, go ahead, come on over to GitHub, grab the source code and get it downloaded and imported into Eclipse and then uh, we'll go from there. So I got it pulled up in my Eclipse here. Once you get it imported, you're going to have to do a couple of things in order to um, kind of switch it over to the annotations version, if you will, because because I built this project um, before the annotations video um, and I was actually demonstrating about how to parse XML in the original iteration of this project I did not use Android annotations and I wanted to make sure that that code still worked for the people who are viewing the original stack sites video so I've commented out essentially everything to do with annotations um, so what you gotta do is actually come into this project once you get it imported and uncomment a few things and then we'll switch it over to the annotations activity um, so what you need to do is open up the main annotations activity Java and go ahead and uncomment at the top and the bottom of this file that will go ahead and enable all the code inside here go ahead and save that and then the other change you need to make is inside the manifest for stack sites you need to uncomment the um, main annotations activity here inside the manifest and then you need to copy the intent filter from main activity down to main annotations activity so that that will be the activity that gets called when we uh, when we launch this application after that you should be good to go um, you got to also make sure your imports are set up correctly with Android annotations and that's another thing if you're not familiar with that I definitely recommend you to uh, read up on AndroidAnnotations.org and the documentation and you can also watch this hello annotations video that I put out you can find it on YouTube or back here on makemyandroidapp.org um, and this will tell you how to get your imports set up so you gotta make sure that's working too um, but once you uncomment these things you should be good to go uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this on the emulator just to make sure that everything goes okay after we uncomment that stuff and then uh, once we make sure that that is working correctly I will start talking a little bit here about the differences between the annotation version of this activity and the regular version. So you can see we got main activity, that's the original activity that does not take advantage of Android annotations, and main annotations activity, which is the one um, that does take advantage of the Android annotations. So it looks like we had a little bit of trouble here. Let's see. Um, can I find path class? Okay. Probably what we need to do here uh, let's clean this and let's also check to make sure that our imports are set correctly so we got annotations we got all those checked and let's check one more thing here oh there it is we had to enable that that's the problem and we'll add a jar to 
the compile libs. Okay, so this is all stuff that you can find out about in the uh, the Hello Android annotations video. I'm not going to go too much into what I just did here, but that's stuff that you got to do during project setup. So check out the Hello Android uh, annotations video if you get a similar problem to what I just got, and it'll walk you through exactly what I just did there. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully we should be able to run and uh, have it successfully build here. Okay, so it looks like we're running. Here we go. We're good now. So uh, here's what you should see when you run this for the first time. You should see this list of all the Stack Exchange sites, um, and it's got their name, a little bit of text about them, an icon, and all that kind of stuff. And then you can also click on one of them, and it will launch open the browser and take you to that site. So let's go ahead and dive into the source code for this annotations activity. So if you watch the Stack Sites video, you'll see the regular main activity, which is here. Um, and to accomplish a lot of this stuff, we have like a um, an async task that does our download of the XML, and then an on post execute. It parses that XML, puts it into an adapter, so we can set it to our list view. Um, and then the other thing we have is a anonymous inner class for our list on item click listener, um, and that's where we send the intent off to the browser to tell it we want to load up uh, a certain site based on which row in the list they click. So that's the regular version of this main activity. Now if you jump over to this main annotations activity we'll look at uh, some of the differences here. So you can see the main one here is we've got e this annotation e activity on our um, on our activity dec declaration and we pass it the layout we, we want to use. So this is just a little bit of simplification. You can see down in on create um, we don't really have much going on down here anymore. We don't have to use set content view. We don't have to do any of that kind of stuff because this uh, this EA activity annotation it will take care of the set content view for us um, so that's that's pretty cool it makes it a little bit easier to um, to get your uh, layout set up so you can see we got our sites adapter and then we're gonna use this the next annotation we're gonna use is this find view by ID annotation and this is another cool one that will automatically populate this sites list uh, variable here with the find view by ID on this ID of sites list. So when you put find view by ID up here, it will automatically uh, it will automatically do the find view by ID code that you're you're used to having to do in on create or on start somewhere like that. Um, it will actually take care of that for you. And as long as you make your variable name the same as your ID, then uh, it will pre-populate that variable for you. So you don't have to worry about actually making that find view ID by ID and doing the casting and all that stuff yourself. So that's another cool one that will save you a lot of time uh, and it will make your code a little bit more clear what's going on I think so like I said you can see we got on create not a whole lot going on there the only thing we do is chain to the super um, the next annotation that we use is after views now this is an annotation that means whatever method we put after this so right now we got a refresh UI method whatever method we put here is gonna get called immediately after the views get populated so um, with this when we declare our layout up here, what's going to happen is as soon as this activity starts up, it's going to essentially set our layout into the activity. And then after it's done setting the layout, it will call whatever method we put for after views here. So once all of our um, all of our UI is set up, then it's going to call this refresh UI for us automatically. So what we do there is we say if is network available, which this is basically just a helper method that's going to return true if we currently have the internet access on the device or false if we do not so if we do have internet access we're gonna call fetch feed and if we do not we're just gonna call load list um, and we'll get into what those are here in just a second but the next annotation we got is on item click so this is a an, another really cool thing that Android annotations lets you do is it makes your click listeners a lot more simplified you don't have to worry about anonymous inner classes um, like you do with the regular main activity in this one you just use this at item click and then uh, you make sure that the stacks list right here is the ID for your list view and then you say the name of your method is uh, the ID of your list view so sites list dot or I'm sorry sites list item clicked and then you it will accept a parameter of a stack site which is the type of object that's inside your adapter so that will be the stack site that represents the row you clicked on. 
So we override this item click and that's where we're going to fire off the intent to the browser to tell it we want to open up to a certain page. The next thing we got here is the fetch feed method. You can see the annotation we have on that is at background. That's an annotation that means um, everything that's inside this method we want to happen in a background thread instead of the main thread. So this is another place where Android annotations makes it really easy for us to do this. Instead of having to worry about threads and handlers or async task, we just put this at background on our method and it will handle the rest. Android annotations will handle um, everything that we need it to in order to make everything inside this method hand, uh, happen in a background thread instead of the main thread. So inside the fetch feed we got downloader.download from URL. I'm not going to go into that too much, but essentially it's just downloading an XML file and storing it locally um, on the device. And then that's the only thing we do and then we call load list. So the load list method, you can see we got an annotation kind of like background up here, but it's at UI thread which this means everything inside this method will get called on the UI thread. So this is, uh, is really cool synergy between this background and the UI thread because at the end of your background you can just call your UI thread method to update your views and that's exactly what we did here. After we download the file uh, we call load list because load list is going to parse that file and then populate it into our views on the screen. And since we're changing the views on the screen, obviously we got to be on the UI thread. So we use this at UI thread, make our method, we'll call it load list. And we say M adapter equals new sites adapter. And we will use the XML pull parser um, and its static method to parse the file that we just downloaded inside this fetch feed background method. And then we'll say sites list dot set adapter M adapter. So that's all we have to do to populate all the stuff into our list. And then the last thing, in this activity, and this is uh, this is one part where we don't have any help from Android annotations. It's the same as the main activity. We have this is network available that essentially returns to us true false whether we got uh, network access or not. So that's everything inside the annotations activity. You can see um, there's no none, no uh, no more inner classes like there were with the click listener here. No more anonymous inner classes. Uh, we don't have to worry about this uh, random async task down here. Um, and our code, uh, because of these annotations, it's a little bit more kind of self-commenting. You can see what each block of code is for based on this annotation. It kind of breaks your class up into uh, chunks that I think at least are a little bit more uh, clear as to what they're for as opposed to async task. I mean, if you're used to this kind of stuff um, in the main activity, then this will be pretty familiar to you. You'll be able to understand what all this stuff is for. Um, and that's that's really cool, but if you're not used to it, like if you're brand new to Android, or uh, even if you are used to it, it still may be a little clunky to you. It may be something that you had to just learn, and once you did it enough, you got it figured out. Whereas, I feel like with this annotations version of the activity, it's uh, it's a lot more clear what each block of code is actually for, and what it's doing, and all that stuff. And it. Uh, it is. Uh, it, it makes your work a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about some of the boilerplate code, like you know, set content view gets replaced by this thing here, and the find view by ID gets replaced by that thing, and then you know the threads and handlers and async tasks, all that stuff. It, it the standard annotations it replaces a lot of that boilerplate code with these single line annotations, um, so that you don't have to worry about as many typos because you're not typing out all that long stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it just makes your code a lot more clear what's going on inside of it. So that's, uh, that's my quick example of one of the things you can do with annotations. If you're still interested in it, definitely I recommend you take out or you check out this annotation, AndroidAnnotations.org, you know, go through the documentation, figure out more stuff you can do with it. There's a whole long list here, available annotations of, uh, the different annotations you're allowed to use. I did not use nearly all of them in this but there are a bunch more here I definitely recommend if you like this style of code check this stuff out and uh, and start working annotations into some of your future projects so I hope you guys found this useful um, if you did please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and uh, check back soon because we'll have another video up soon thank you